Hello, hello, everybody. Good morning. Here. <laughs> Thanks for joining us today, guys. We have another financial astrology roundtable uh, spaces event uh, as we've been doing every month this year. Uh, we've got Margot Amala, we've got Gianni Depochi, and we've got Marsilio's Musings once again. Um, thanks, everybody, um, for joining us uh, today. And we're going to go over the situation for markets, uh, talk about the Middle East uh, war crisis situation, talk about the inflation, the Fed, CPI coming out tomorrow. Uh, that's a big deal this week. Um, guys, how are my, uh, my co-hosts doing here? Uh, Marsilio, are you there? I'm here. Uh, thank you very much. Happy to be here. Good. How's everything going for you, my friend? Uh, pretty good. Uh, yeah. Um, doing well. Uh, more about that later. And uh, I'll look forward to chatting with everybody. So you had a pretty good call. Uh, I believe that Marcilio was, was pretty bullish on the major stock indexes. Uh, in the September um, September Spaces event, and that turned out to be a pretty good call. Stock indexes continue to move up, uh, and uh, we'll see what Marsilio has to say uh, in a bit. Margo, uh, how are you doing this week? I'm doing pretty good. Um, just kind of making our way through eclipse season. Um, <laughs> Indeed. Anxiously, anxiously looking forward to coming to an end next week. <laughs> And Margo had a good call on gold, I believe. Uh, she was bullish on gold, and of course, gold broke out in September and continued uh, to make new all-time highs. Uh, Mr. Gianni, how are you doing? Hi, Robert. I'm uh, doing pretty good. How about you? I'm doing well, doing well. Uh, how was your retreat in Slovenia, which I believe Margo also attended? Yes, yes. So uh, it was, uh, I think, a pretty great success it was uh very high energy and as soon as that thing ended uh, i crashed man i was i was pretty tired but i put a lot of into it and uh, i think everyone that was there uh got a lot out of it so it, it was good for sure excellent excellent Gl great glad to hear that gianni had a very good call also i remember specifically he said you know rate cuts are going to add liquidity to the markets this is bullish and uh he was certainly right about that uh, my own calls were not that good. Uh, I was I was a bit skeptical of the rate cuts uh, were going to be bullish because of the September seventeenth eclipse, which was conjunct Neptune. I was almost a bit like too consensus that the rate cuts were going to be bullish. I was a bit contrarian, and and that turned out to be not the right call. Uh, actually, sometimes the consensus call is just the no brainer, and in this case, the rate cuts uh, certainly were have been bullish for stocks. They kind of were bullish for Bitcoin and crypto, uh, but crypto is really another day here where the stock indexes continue to move up, and it's the same old story of crypto really languishing in the doldrums and just not doing anything. Um, and that just seems to be the current theme right now. Uh, a lot more opportunities in the stock markets uh, right now, and uh, we're just waiting on crypto. I'm going to you know, talk about, uh, I'll talk about crypto a little bit. So actually, why don't I'm going to start because I went last the first couple times. So I'm just going to start here, and we're each going to do about a 10 to 12 minute um, presentation, and then we'll have some time for questions at the end. Um, so uh, as you guys know, I'm Crypto Domus, so I tend to talk mostly about crypto and. Um, you know, I, I, sort of big picture, my overall forecast has continued to be pretty good. Uh, since June, you know, I, 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 you know, June, I kind of made this famous call uh, to take profits off the table, lock in gains, and, and prepare for a long, choppy, boring uh, three or four month period into eclipse season. And that's exactly what we got. Now, I was a bit too bearish in August and September. Um, and, uh, you know, crypto certainly did have uh, some dips in that period, but the August T-square uh, wasn't that bad. And the September 17th eclipse ended up being a bit bullish, actually. It was the October 2nd eclipse that really kind of dropped, you know, uh, Bitcoin did a 10% dump and the alt some of the altcoins dumped a little harder, although a few of them are holding up well. 
Uh, and that was on the Iran, you know, Israel crisis, right? We're all kind of sitting on the edge of our seat now, waiting for Israel to respond. Uh, so there's a lot of geopolitical risk overhang. You know, stock markets kind of shrugged this off. They were down, you know, half a percent for one or two days, but actually closed the week green. Whereas crypto really got hit by this geopolitical uncertainty. Why? Why did crypto? Why does crypto care so much? more than the stock market about the uh, Middle East crisis. It's a bit hard to say, but one thing we'll say is, uh, which I posted on Twitter and I'm gonna repost it now, is there's a big supply glut for Bitcoin right now. There's over 400,000 Bitcoin sitting on over-the-counter trading desks. Um, and this is a two to three year high. So the halving actually you know, we're not getting that supply reduction that we hoped for. And until that, you know, over-the-counter supply uh, gets bought up, I think it's unlikely that there's going to be a big move for crypto. The other problem is the U.S. government, uh, the Supreme Court just, like, uh, gave some ruling uh, which allowed the U.S. government to unload something like another 5,000 Bitcoins. Uh, it's like, I, I can't remember the exact amount. I also uh, had just posted this the other day. Let me just go back and check that. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. So, six, sorry, 60, 69, uh, almost 70,000 Bitcoin. It's worth $4 billion. Uh, there was some type of Supreme Court approval for the U.S. government to start selling this seized Bitcoin. Well, this is kind of similar to what Germany did back in June and July. Uh, and that really took the market down. So again, we've just got another, uh, you know, we've, we've just got too much Bitcoin available on the market. And if the U.S. government does start selling this, it's, it's also not going to be good. It's going to add to the problems here. Astrologically, um, it's just really unclear for Bitcoin. We've gotten through the really hard stuff. We've gotten through the, a series of Saturn transits. Uh, to Bitcoin natal and progress. In both cases, dumped Bitcoin. Uh, so those were very accurate. Um, the, and then we've also sort of gotten through eclipses. I mean, I guess there's a lingering effect. You know, the eclipses can, can have a time band effect that could be several weeks, you know, before and after. Uh, so we're still in the time band for that October 2nd eclipse. Uh, but that's starting to, you know, uh, starting to ease off a bit now. Some people even say the eclipses can last for several months. Um, we've got, uh, so we've gone through, the, we've gone through sort, sort of the bad uh, astrology for Bitcoin. But the problem is there's, there's, no, there's no really major favorables for Bitcoin right now. We don't have any big Jupiter transits. We don't have any big sort of outer planet trines or sextiles, which we saw earlier in the year. We had you know, Jupiter trines. We had uh, a long Neptune uh, favorable sextile. We had, we had a lot of favorables, and we just don't, we're not seeing that right now. So, uh, you know, what is going to be the signal that really moves this market? Well, Pluto's stationing tomorrow. It's in a key position at 29 Capricorn because it's conjunct the Bitcoin uh, progress sun and natal Jupiter. So uh, the pivot to direct, you know, that could, I mean, Pluto conjunctions, um, they can, you know, it, it's, it's hard to know exactly what that's going to do. And it's a long, it's been a long transit. It's like a 10 week transit, right? It's from September 1st, it's going to continue to November 19th in that same degree. So what is, you know, it's, it's hard to say. It's not just going to do one thing. It could do uh, quite a bit of different things. We've also got Jupiter stationed last night around midnight. That's in a square to Bitcoin's natal Saturn. Uh, and so that, you know, seems to be indicating this kind of stuck at the resistance uh, and so, uh, you know, what's going to move this market? It, it's still a bit of a mystery, uh, actually. Um, you know, maybe Mars, uh, right around November 3rd, you've got Mars moving into Leo. Uh, that might be a little bit better than the Mars in Cancer for Bitcoin and crypto. Uh, you know, that's kind of a hot, fiery, confident placement. Uh, another problem we have right now is Mars is really slowing down uh, for you astrologers out there. You might have noticed, right? Mars transits are now, instead of lasting about 
36 to 48 hours, they're, they're starting to last 48 to 72 hours. So Mars is, Mars is really slowing down in its effect, uh, getting ready to go retrograde in December, but we're already starting to see uh, we're already starting to see a different type of effect from Mars. So, um, you know, I continue to think the most likely outcome for Bitcoin is, um, is a December rally. Uh, Santa rally with Venus and Aquarius. And uh, we do have a favorable from Saturn right now. Now, Saturn, one of the, the good news for Bitcoin is Saturn has turned from a problem into a favorable. Saturn is now at 13 degrees Pisces. It's in a sextile to Bitcoin's natal sun at 13 Capricorn. Um, that's not a very flashy, showy uh, aspect, but it should indicate, in fact, it may be kind of boring, um, it, but it should indicate stability. Um, and Saturn is kind of in that position really for the rest of the year. Uh, so that, that should indicate some stability from the market and you know, possibly no major crash out. You know, I think the, the bottom is kind of in for Bitcoin, but that doesn't mean we're necessarily going to get the big rally. So overall, my, my prediction is kind of the stalemate continues uh, alongside this long sideways chop continues until, uh, you know, maybe Mars and Leo in November uh, move some things up a bit. And then certainly Venus and Aquarius is, is probably our best bet, you know, in December. Uh, but even in December, we have an overlapping Mercury-Mars retrograde period that could be a problem. So there's no really clear period that I can see where, where Bitcoin breaks out. Um, now, on my Patreon subscriber reports and in the live stream video yesterday, I did talk about a, a signal for Ethereum. Uh, a bullish signal for Ethereum, but I'm going to leave it at that. So you guys would have to like check out my Patreon subscriptions to really get that information moving forward. We do have a kind of an interesting bullish signal for Ethereum that's coming up, uh, but that's all I'm going to say about it for now. I mean, what can you say about stocks? They just keep making all new all-time highs. Um, the geopolitical risk is out there. Um, especially this October 17th full moon in Aries uh, squaring, you know, in, in war sign Aries squaring war god Mars. Uh, you know, so that doesn't look very good uh, in terms of just the war and geopolitics. Uh, you've got Mars also is, is slowly moving into an opposition with Pluto. That hits exact November 3rd, about two days before the election. So certainly that's quite concerning. Um for more uh, war, uh, conflict in the Middle East. And, uh, you know, potentially this could have a big impact on oil prices. Uh, I was talking with Gianni earlier today about that. So oil, you know, oil markets uh, are definitely, uh, you know, something to watch right now. Gold, you know, certainly is outperforming really crypto right now and could be a great place to continue to add uh, with more geopolitical, really endless geopolitical uncertainty in the Middle East right now. Uh, so I continue to be bullish on gold and stocks. Uh, and uh, some of the stocks I've been looking at, actually, is, is interesting is Zillow and, um, uh, Zillow and Redfin, uh, real estate sector. I think the rate cuts, gonna um, lowering mortgage rates, I think is going to be bullish uh, for the... Uh, you know, for Zillow, for the real estate sector. And, and one way to play that is, is Zillow, in particular Zillow. Uh, and uh, the charts actually look pretty good. I'll, I'll try to put some charts out there. Um, so that's kind of what I got for you guys today. Um, you know, Bitcoin's just been, been quite disappointing. I mean, every time we get excited and we get a rally, it kind of, it kind of pulls back and dumps again. So uh, it's just, uh, you know, now we've got to be flexible and adaptable. I'm not really seeing anything that indicates that big bullish move that we've all been waiting for, uh, but that doesn't mean Bitcoin can't surprise. So I think the name of the game is really watching that chart every day, uh, looking for that, you know, Bitcoin to get back above the 200-day moving average would be good. Uh, you know, the chart, the Bitcoin chart, I, I think I'm just going to wrap this up and say the daily chart for Bitcoin, it kind of leans bullish. You know, even though we're getting a, a dump today, uh, the Bitcoin chart leans a little bit bullish. You've got a double bottom followed by a higher high, 
and the key support zone is is still sort of holding between six you know sixty thousand to sixty one. Uh, so until that key support zone breaks, I'm leaning bullish on Bitcoin. Unless we get a, a, a lower low below fifty eight thousand, I'm still kind of leaning bullish on Bitcoin in the big picture. Uh, the weekly MACD for Bitcoin is, is looking quite bullish. Uh, it's been one of the longest red streaks we've had in a very long time. It's been red since April. So it's looking to turn green on that weekly MACD. It's something positive. The overall environment is positive. Stocks are bullish. Rate cuts added liquidity to the market. Uh, jobs report was strong. Uh, you know, I mean, the overall environment is uh, is bullish. And so I continue to lean slightly bullish uh, for Bitcoin. Uh, okay, guys, now, who did I say was going to go uh, with Marsilio? Are you, you know, I think, uh, are we going to have you go next? Yeah, I'm ready. All right, well, um, um, do you have any thoughts on the CPI tomorrow? And, uh, you know, and then uh, how do you think that affect the stock indexes? Uh, no, but the last time I checked the rate, uh, they call it well, the Fed, the Fed watch, the CME Fed watch tool. There was a um, eighty percent chance of another twenty-five basis point cut. So I, I think the inflation is just going to become not so much an issue. It's it is trending down. That's why the Fed cut fifty basis points. I, I'm not expecting a big surprise either way. And I mean, look, things could change. I don't I don't have a way of predicting CPI versus expectations with uh, with timing technique at, at, at all. But right now, there's a widespread consensus of another 25 basis point cut. So that means that most of the market thinks that inflation is going to continue to be less of an issue. So I have no reason to disagree with that. Okay. And what's your overall view, uh, I mean, for stocks and crypto uh, moving forward? Yeah, sure. So I'm going to start with crypto because I know a lot of people in the call are interested. And the last space I said, I likened... Um, Crypto is especially Bitcoin to an IPO that would that uh, and because the ETFs launched this year that that was kind of similar to an IPO in that there's just a long hangover and digestion period of sideways and, and maybe down and so far that continues to play out. So um, okay, crypto fans, is that changed? No, it it, it it again it's just chopping sideways. If you it, to, wait, to make money on this, you can play a range and swing train, or trade or find the, uh, you know, rare altcoin. I, to be honest, I don't even track track uh, some of those. Um, that's actually going up or, or just wait. And I don't think that anything's going to change. In fact, I have a little bit of bad news uh, in that uh, I segment my, I do look at a lot of market timing data using astrology and I segment that data between whether the asset is above the daily 200 moving average or below. And Bitcoin tried to recapture and quickly failed at its 200. So as long as it stays below that daily 200 moving average, um, which for those of you not tracking this stuff, you know, very carefully is about 63.5 right now and getting rejected from that in kind of in a big way. Or in this potentially the start start as long as it stays below that daily two hundred moving average, I just have a, a slew of bear market conditions up ahead. The data that looks pretty bad in different um, planet placements, like all coming together. So I I I think it'll be a miracle if uh, Bitcoin holds the lows. Uh, when I say lows, I mean like the fifty. Four, 52, 54. There's one huge wick in that August flash crash, but otherwise, the low, the other wicks are 52 and change. The closing low in August was around 54k, so uh, it could easily go down there. But I'm really not expecting recovery now. If I'm wrong, I'll, I'll change my tune in terms of I'll abandon the bear market data. But as long as Bitcoin is below that daily trend moving average, which is falling in slope, by the way, uh, and has been falling in slope uh, since mid-September. And it's something I pointed out on X is like not a good development for Bitcoin. Um, so, yeah, I think the low that's going to matter, this is what people want to know, is is more likely uh, March, April 2025. 
So I don't think this sideways range is going to continue. I think if anything, it's going to go lower and, you know, maybe it holds, maybe it doesn't. And all my data says caution ahead and my longer term timing stuff. I think, yeah, I think in terms there, now there will be, okay. I, I will give you a little bit of positive news. I think there is a good, I probably, we all agree that there, the best chance of a rally for the rest of these, this year will be Venus and Aquarius, which is December 7th for a few weeks. Or if we, if nobody, if other people don't agree with that, feel free to speak up. Um, but I think that's uh, been historical and Venus and Aquarius has um, rallied cryptos many times in the past. So on to indexes. Um, yeah, I, 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 so index has just been massively bullish, uh, bullish September. And, you know, there are just so many exciting opportunities going on in stocks that I'm really not paying attention to cryptos that much because, um, yeah, it's, it's just I like uh, it's a fourth quarter. It's seasonally bullish, especially in bull markets, kind of the opposite effect, like in bull markets, the time periods that are coming are already in play and even coming due are all like the best on a placement or the second best planet placement. So there's just more on the way. And as uh, Crypto Domus mentioned, Mars is slowing, but this really doesn't seem to be slowing stocks at all. And, you know, there could be a slowdown in front of the election. Like, uh, I think that's probably likely as we get later into October, there might be a wait and see. But as long as there's not some sort of massive cluster, you know, uh, for, for lack of a better word, of some sort of, I think whoever wins, as when the uncertainty is removed, market's going to take off again. And unless there's some, like, Supreme Court, yada, yada, you know, something really odd, which I'm not expecting. Um, and hopefully that for the country that doesn't happen. But I think the rally continues and, uh, you know, stocks are just very bullish. Sentiment is not near an extreme. And uh, that may be the case, uh, but levels that could have just stopped things just didn't. And, um, you know, a negative astro just had a pause and a positive astro blasting off. And, but, um, and right now institutions are looking for the next AI play. Uh, one of my picks um, from August, or what I noticed, what I like to do is um, you know, watch what holds up best and drop and lead on the way up. And I noticed Palantir, and I had a few different reasons. So I, I bought that um, early in August and then added, and then added again, and I've held it since. It's my biggest position. And uh, so I'm kind of liking life right now. Now, I've certainly been humbled by the market many times, and I'm not trying to gloat, but clearly the market's looking for AI names. Avgo is near, Broadcom's near highs. Even AI is getting, company behind chat, GPT is getting a, a bounce today. And so um, anyway, I think my time, uh, how am I doing on time? I'm about up. Um, I don't think Palantir is the next story AI stock, and I thought that since August. Since NVIDIA had a big run, Tesla's not doing that much. The big companies seem a little more flat-footed, even Google, Microsoft. And I has just a lot of uh, cool factor story stuff going on. Uh, and, you know, to be honest, I, I, the other um, asset I like, Reddit is maybe too soon after the IPO, but I think it's worth watching because it already has more than a billion active users, monthly active users, which is higher than Twitter. And, and Facebook it only has about over 3 billion monthly active users, but the market caps are so dramatically different. Uh, of course, Facebook's making money and Reddit's not, but I really like Reddit and use it every day. <laughs> so I'm kind of watching that stock. And I, I also have used ChatGPT for everything, so I might just nibble on, even though AI, AI is not leading in the usual way I like to do it, I might take a little little fun position just to watch it. So that's um, that's what I got. Uh, I'm happy to take any questions later, and uh, I think that's it. Cool, cool. Uh, do you have any uh, prediction for the U.S. elections, uh, Marcelino? No, you know, I, I looked at the polls today, and it, it seems like a toss-up, and I haven't investigated that in detail yet in terms of who I, you know, the individual nail charts and 
who's likely to win. I, I think, um, uh, well, I have certain concern. I have more concerns in 2025 based on who wins. But I don't have, um, I haven't done like the deep, some people are really specialists over that, and that's just not my specialty in terms of who's going to edge out and win. But even if that person wins, will there be some sort of subterfuge that, changes the results. Like, we can't rule that out, right? It happened in 2000, and Supreme Court gave a nod, and there was, and so, <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> I don't want to talk about politics or my things, but let's just say that it could something like that could happen, like, or a different version, right? Um, and I, I just don't have a way of figuring that out. If that does happen, it'll be a sad day for the country, and I'll probably have more concerns about um, maybe the bond market in 2025. Um, and also, I don't know, I mean, some of you who are more uh, um, um, knowledgeable about the crypto scene know exactly the policies of each candidate and how that's going to affect crypto. But for stocks, you know, either way, it's, it's looking more like business as usual uh, for the candidates. So uh, anyway, I'm so, so sorry, long-winded answer to say no, I don't have a prediction for the election. I'm hoping it just comes off smoothly without a lot of controversy. Otherwise, you know, that for the sake of everybody. And uh, that stocks, I think, want to rally on the removal of this uncertainty. That's what I got. All right. Thanks, Marsilio. Uh, yeah, I don't have a prediction either on the U.S. election. Uh, because uh, I don't, I don't see, I don't have a clear. Uh, there, I don't see a clear astrological edge on that. It's it's too close to call, and uh, so I'm I'm not personally going to go out on a limb here uh, for that one. I'm just going to be watching like everybody else uh, to see how it plays out. Uh, uh, Gianni, I think you're going to go next. Yes. Yes. Do you have a prediction for the U.S. elections, my friend? <laughs> I I do not. I'm I'm kind of in the same category as you guys. Where uh, when I look at the the stuff astrologically uh, between the two candidates, they, they, they both have catalysts that could, uh, you know, lead, lead to their victory. So I don't know, may, maybe it's, uh, it's worth having a conversation about whether looking at the individual natal charts um, are really the best thing. Cause you know, so many people vote along the party lines. So it's, uh, it's hard to say on that front. Okay. Uh, well, uh, CPI, any concerns for that tomorrow? Um, no, no, I think CPI is still uh, pretty pretty safe for the most part. The reason being is that energy prices and crude oil um, are still pretty contained. That being said, uh, as you and I discussed uh, earlier today, I do think that we are in the time band now where a long-term cycle low could be uh, either complete or on the precipice of being complete in the energy market. Um, and the timing of it is certainly interesting. So you had that low that could have been a false breakdown on uh, September 10th in crude oil. And then uh, you, had that, you had a pretty nice rally. We're now selling off, but obviously the Fed cut rates and started printing money uh, just a couple of weeks later. Um, so, you know, we've had geopolitical tensions pretty elevated over the last couple of years. And it's worth pointing out that you had uh, the high in crude oil prices not long after the conflict between Russia and Ukraine began. So I don't know if, geopolitics really are the catalyst for for higher energy prices anymore as they once were i mean you have so much production in the united states now the the amount of technological advancements you've had uh, on the supply end of the you know supply and demand curve for crude oil i mean these producers can really up the supply in the global market basically at the snap of the finger so i think it's it's more of a story of demand now and uh, inflation and money printing. So I think there is a risk for crude oil to surge higher over the next year or two, especially, you know, when you look at next year, Neptune going into the uh, sign of Aries, it's like, uh, I liken it to throwing gasoline on, on a fire, right? Um, or even if you throw water, whether you decide to, you know, put uh, associate Neptune with water or gasoline, either way, there's going to be smoke. And so I, I do think inflation is going to become more of a concern next year, and the Fed will have to do a double pivot of the sorts. But I agree with you, uh, Robert. I do think that interest rates are going to come down for the next year or so, and uh, that's going to be a major tailwind for the real estate market and for stocks overall. 
Uh, I'm a little bit more bullish on crypto uh, than perhaps Marsilio was. I think that we have completed an intermediate term cycle low. I wouldn't be surprised if we spent a little bit more time chopping around here. But in the near term, I've, I've been a big fan uh, in the crypto market uh, when it comes to hard aspects between Venus and Uranus. And on Monday, you have an opposition between Venus and Uranus, and I think they could help break it out of its range. Uh, a couple other things to consider with Bitcoin, and this was actually a study that was done by uh, one of the students that we had in the Merriman Market Timing Academy. His name is uh, Chris Lindahl from, uh, from Norway. And he showed that, uh, and I think, Marcelo, you probably pointed something out along these lines too, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but what Chris found was there is a pretty good tendency to see 20% or greater moves in Bitcoin uh, with Mars and Cancer. And we have that now, and then you're going to have that retrograde later this year where Mars is going to you know, spend quite a bit more time in the sign of cancer. So I think Bitcoin's consolidation could continue in the near term, and you might even see uh, the early signs of a resolution of this consolidation by the end of next week after Venus opposes Uranus. But with Mars still in uh, cancer, that could be volatile for crypto as well. And then in the past, I talked about Venus in, uh, in Libra, being a catalyst for 20% or greater moves in Ethereum. And it turns out that Venus and Scorpio can be that way for Ethereum as well, and Mars and Cancer. So I was uh, certainly interested in what you had to say about um, Ethereum, Robert. I know you didn't, you didn't spill the beans completely, but uh, I do think there is an interesting opportunity brewing in Ethereum because both Bitcoin and Ethereum have satisfied their intermediate term cyclical requirements based on percentage decline and the dura uh, the length of decline uh, based on their previous market history that was something that was talked about at the uh, MMA investment retreat last month so I'm I'm I've been accumulating crypto I'm very bullish micro strategy above above everything else I mean that chart looks like it's gonna rip um, so I've been accumulating micro strategy for the last uh, couple of months or so I also like Core Scientific in that space. Another crypto-related miner, the ticker symbol for that is CORZ. And uh, I was really pleased and impressed with what Marcelio just said about Reddit because, believe it or not, in one of the stock picking services that I run, I actually published Reddit as a as a bullish trade today. So <laughs> that that was uh, pretty amazing timing there. And I think it has a lot to do with Jupiter and Gemini. You know, social networks, social media. Uh, internet stocks have done very well. Technology just reclaimed the top performing sector in the S&P year to date uh, after suffering a nasty sell off uh, in July. So I'm, I'm bullish on tech. I'm bullish on chips. I think NVIDIA is about to break out again. Um, you know what they say, guys, a bull market climbs a wall of worry. And there's a million different reasons to be concerned about the state of the world right now. That's fine. We've been here before. And I think that this is just going to continue higher. Uh, anytime you're going to see selling with this improving liquidity environment, I told you that I like to look at credit spreads. Um, you're going to see selling kind of be slow and drawn out and very boring, so to speak. That, that's how the bull markets tend to behave when you have in, improving liquidity conditions, which we do. And that's probably going to be the case until inflation rears its ugly head again. And, you know, between Uranus going into Gemini next year, Pluto definitively going into Aquarius next month, Neptune into Aries, um, you know, Saturn into Aries. You know, think about this from uh, an inflationary, deflationary standpoint. Saturn is a deflationary planet. Saturn's going to be going into Aries next year where he is debilitated. So if a deflationary planet is debilitated, to me, that, that kind of says inflation. So I don't think the inflationary saga is over. I think we're in a new macroeconomic regime. I actually think inflation is going to be bullish for the U.S. dollar. Uh, interesting, uh, interestingly enough, I think that's that's the new paradigm in which we're living, and that has to do simply with interest rates. And I am I am bullish the dollar. I'm bullish stocks. I'm bullish bonds for like the next six to nine months at least. And uh, eventually, crude oil is going to wreak havoc on this market, but I don't think we're there quite yet. And um, I, I am looking for a, a, a high of significance to be complete in Bitcoin sometime next year. But right now, I think I think this could be one of the last hurrahs that that we have where you can make stupid money in crypto. Not not today, not right now, obviously. But I do think it's around the corner. Um, and I, I do think that the low that Marsilia pointed out uh, that we had in 
in August or you know September if you want to use the closing price is that that key level to watch. If we take that out to the downside, obviously you know have to reassess the the bullish outlook. But you know Bitcoin made a new all time high back in March, and as a rule, consolidations near the highs of a move are bullish from a technical standpoint. So that's uh, how I'm angling now. And uh, you know you've built this six month base, and I'm looking for a big rip to the upside uh, once once it breaks out of it. And uh, any thoughts on gold, my friend? Gold. Well, you know, gold near term, I, I think you're going to have a little bit more downside. I had an upside target of 2650, 2700. We exceeded that by like, I think, like nine, 10 bucks, uh, something like that. I, I like silver more. I, gold is due for a 50 week cycle low here in the next couple of weeks. I think next year is going to be good for gold as well, especially with interest rates coming down. And um, I, I like gold miners, I like silver more than, than actual spot gold. And um, I, I think that we'll see a high of significance form in, in gold next year. But what I'm basically looking to happen, I, I'm kind of really pushing the time the time schedule out, but this is kind of what I'm working with right now, is almost like a repeat of 2021, 2022, where you have stocks making new highs, the dollar starts to rally, inflation starts to accelerate, and then it creates higher interest rates, and then you have you know liquidity issues in the market. I mean... I know it doesn't really seem this way, but 2022 was a really nasty market. I mean, that was the longest decline you had since the global financial crisis. The NASDAQ actually dropped more in 2022 than it did in 2020. And I argue we had a recession and we came out of it pretty nicely, but I think it was a double dip recession from 2020. You did have two negative quarters of GDP. So I don't think we're heading to a recession anytime soon. Um, I think the risks of, of another recession is end of next year, beginning of 2026. So that's, that's what I'm... Uh, See yeah. right now, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I agree with you there. You know, I mean, that's an important that's an important point. You know, I mean, like I was trying to say, uh, you know, inflation is down. We, you know, we we should really mention that for last Friday's job report was jobs report was super critical. Yeah. I mean, it just showed like how strong the labor market really is, and that was really the one fear we had was yeah. that the Fed was late on the rate cuts and the labor market was deteriorating and a recession was starting to come up and that jobs report on Friday really just killed that narrative. And, uh, you know, it's basically bullish as far as the eye can see really as, as far as I can tell, uh, the fed is pulling off a miracle, uh, threading the needle to a soft landing. And that, that's really something I think everybody needs to be aware of. Well, can I, I'm, I just want to add one, one more thing yeah. on that note. And then I, I do have an announcement. So I, I think, I don't think employment is the issue the Fed needs to worry about. I think it's inflation. I think they're playing with fire. They started, and I you see this like with all the with Saturn and Neptune going into Aries next year. I think like fire and gasoline pouring gas in the fire is like the symbolic way to think of it. They started cutting interest well, rates before they got inflation below their two percent annual target, and so I, I think inflation is going to be, become a problem again next year. Not not yet though. Yeah, I have a one comment on that actually, which is you. Um, one thing that I, I mean, one thing that I've seen over the you know watching astrology for over two decades is that sometimes when you have multiple ingresses, those initial ingresses don't really do that much. Uh, sure. And so uh, you know Saturn and, and Uranus and uh, Saturn and Neptune ingress and Nept and Uranus ingress into Gemini, but those are initial ingresses. It'll crisscross yeah. back and forth. Twenty twenty six, you're going to get the, the the real ingresses, right? Um, and on that, and, and so we might see a lot more of what you're saying in twenty twenty six. Yeah. And yeah. the other the other thing on that is that Pluto's final ingress into Aquarius, November nineteenth. Uh, now that one, you see, you often see a very much more dramatic event around the final ingress of an outer planet. So November nineteenth should be should be interesting. Um, and certainly uh, that Pluto will be in Aquarius for good. And uh, we should see some big developments around AI uh, at that time. Uh, so that's something for everybody to watch. Yeah. Uh, and you had an announcement? Yes, yes. A quick announcement here. I uh, have just completed my first book called Esoteric Economics, and it's at the printing press now. So I, I posted a link on my uh, Twitter here. If anyone is interested in pre-ordering it and saving 10% off the, uh, the sticker price, uh, I have hard copies, a hard cover and soft cover uh, available, and we're looking to have uh, these books delivered by the end of the year. So uh, definitely check that out. If you enjoy the conversations that we have here, this book will be right up your alley. Congratulations, Gianni. That's awesome accomplishment. And 
Uh, I'll definitely be ordering a copy. Thank you. Um, <laughs> also, one thing I'm just going to drop out there is the four of us are talking about doing uh, a really in-depth uh, sort of workshop event, uh, maybe later this year, maybe early next year. Uh, so that's something our listeners should be aware of. Uh, we might be doing a, a sort of a, like a paid, uh, much more in-depth, detailed analysis workshop uh, together. So uh, that's looking to, uh, you know, sort of build on our collaboration here uh, next year and do something a little bit different. Um, okay, uh, Margo, uh, how are you doing? Are you ready to go? Yeah, I am all set. <laughs> all right, excellent. So what are you looking at? Anything standing out to you right now in the overall uh, market situation? Yeah, well, um, I have uh, all kinds of things to share. Um, I think, uh, for, well, do you want me, I'll just jump into the market since that's kind of the first topic that you suggested here. Um, so since July, I've been tracking several planetary cycles, including the 95 year cycle, which correlate with, um, monthly market tops before significant corrections. And that does include black swan events. Um, at the last spaces event, I was actually bearish the U S equity markets, uh, which clearly didn't play out yet. Uh, but with that, I, I also have uh, been posting about and sharing the awareness that eclipse season um, disrupts planetary cycles, and specifically in the analog work I do, um, it has a very high probability, well, about a 60% probability, and that probability went up when we inverted this time, of inverting um, the, the existing cycle. And so that happened, and... Um, so where we're at now is uh, that we, we have moved up, which is a deviation from the analog. But if you go back, I made a video about the 1929 analog on YouTube, so you can check that out there. But, and I am going to make an update to that actually this week. Um, but the deviation from the analog is incredibly, um, it, I mean, it ha well, it happens more than 60% of the time. And so in 100% of those cases, the deviation course corrects. Now, keep in mind that a 95-year cycle has limited data. So that's my only caveat, right, is that I've tracked this to, say, the 2000 top, the 2007 top, um, the 2020 top. Uh, the, I actually did the 2018 consolidation period. I did the 2021 consolidation period. And all of those 95-year cycles, of course, correct. So I think there's a very high probability chance that we are going to see a top in the stock market um, in the next several weeks. So that's what I'm on watch for. Um, you know, overall, uh, this topping is a process, and I think it actually could be ongoing into Q1 of 2025. Um, my, my bias is that we will potentially see a notable move down in Q4 of this year, though. At, a um a piece of so I actually went ahead and posted all of my charts ahead of time so that you guys can reference those while I'm talking. Um, and there's a chart that really caught my attention um, by Wayne Whaley, and I I posted that, and I did a little bit of extended research on his research. And so he said so far um, the tw 2024 S and P has experienced a gain of over 10 percent in the first nine months with no negative rolling quarters within this time frame. Um, when this happens the overwhelming majority of Q4s close up. Actually, 12 out of the last 15 times did. So could Q4 close up? Certainly, it could. However, what I want to point out is that the three times that we didn't, one of them included the 1987 drawdown. And the the, the other seven times that, oh, sorry, not the other seven times. I'm checking my data right now. Um, so, okay, so the data, the research that I did was actually post this event. So after these um, huge, pro huge, hugely profitable years that had really positive results, what happened the next year? And so what I found, and I just published the, I published this on Twitter, so you can reference it. But I found that seven out of those fifteen events marked major monthly tops that included the twenty twenty one top before the twenty twenty two year long bear market, the twenty seventeen top before the twenty eighteen correction. Um, and you, my list goes on, and you can you can take a look at the post on Twitter. Um, it also included the Black Monday crash. Uh, that actually happened in Q4 of the same year. Um, so then there was also five events where the following year led to upside. Um, and then there were three events where it was a sideways range-bound year. 
So um, I think that that information is really important to consider because while everybody feels really euphoric right now, um, I think that we are going to see a, cor a monthly correction. And I'm not calling for a crash. I'm just looking for a monthly correction. And I actually think that monthly correction is for buying. Um, and so that's actually what I'm really holding out for and looking forward to. Um, I am mostly focused on short-term trading right now. And really, I'm even focused on day trading specifically because of the eclipse. Because eclipse periods just have this tendency to... Um, to disrupt the current cycles. And I, I'm actually reading a great book right now called The Predictive Power of Eclipses by Bill Meridian. And I posted earlier today a quote on Twitter, uh, Twitter that um, really stood out from me from his work. Uh, he said, it's best to postpone major decisions until the week following an eclipse because one usually obtains new information or awareness that causes one to make a different decision. The eclipse is a red flag indicating that there's hidden knowledge that can upset one's plans. In the period prior to the eclipse, we are in the shadow, not seeing the complete situation. And this gives me a good moment to kind of loop that back into kind of the CPI, FOMC conversation. Um, and I just, I wanted to point out that the last uh, FOMC dis, uh, rate cut actually happened within 24 hours of the lunar eclipse at 25 degrees Pisces. And, you know, for, for the non-astrologers out there, the, the kind of short version of that eclipse is that it was closely aligned to um, the Federal Reserve's midheaven, which is a key point um, that is involved in public reputation. So Neptune was also involved in this eclipse, and Neptune often distorts perceptions of market realities. And with it in conjunction with the full moon near the Fed's uh, midheaven, it suggests that the public might not have the full picture. Um, there may be distorted market perceptions, and we may see a concealing and a revealing, so to speak, from the eclipse. The thing about eclipses is that it oftentimes takes up to six months for the eclipse to unfold. So I expect that we're going to see over the next six to 12 months the, um, the story of interest rates change, basically. Um, that then, I think from astrology, I will loop back into my, my eclipse work in, that I've been looking at into um, the dollar. So um, the dollar is ruled by Pluto. And what really jumped out at me uh, about the most recent eclipses is that the eclipse on the dollar chart actually happened opposite to the natal dollar sun. And when an eclipse happens um, opposite a natal sun of a leader, um, a major financial instrument, or a national entity, um, it, it can oftentimes have an effect in the reducing of the stature of that entity. And so when I saw that this, um, the eclipse, the, the solar eclipse that just happened, happened um, almost exactly opposite. I think there was about a three degree orb without looking at the chart directly. Um, the, the dollar sun, um, that just makes me think that the dollar may have a rough time ahead. Um, I don't think that that rough time starts immediately though. Um, I've been bullish the dollar actually since about August 26th. Um, I posted some charts about the dollar on Twitter also. You guys can take a look. Um, there is a pattern since Pluto rules the dollar of when Pluto has uh, retrograded back into Capricorn and then moved forward back into Aquarius. Each uh, three, It's happened so far four times. And three out of those four times, Pluto has been at uh, the $103.11 to $103.33 price level. And so in my Discord, I've been talking about this, and I have since about uh, late August, I've actually had a price target for the dollar of 103 roughly. Um, then I have an upcoming... Um, weekly harmonic uh, change in trend date. And the, my change in trend dates on the dollar have been absolutely phenomenal. I give them, I mean, a 95% accuracy rate. Um, and I posted a chart with that. So the, the next um, change in trend date that we are looking for on the dollar um, is coming up. Let's see. On 10, 20, the week of 10, 21, 24. Um, so and then we have another one of, I, I don't have the chart right in front of me, a couple weeks right after that. And so what I'm actually expecting is that we may chop around this 103 range uh, for a little while as we move between Pluto stationing direct and Pluto ingressing Aquarius. 
Um, so that's what I got on the dollar. Um, and the dollar is a good segue to gold. Um, so uh, I have been um, tracking gold in each event. And last time I gave a bullish and a bearish scenario. And I gave a specific time date. I said if we close up on 917, then that would indicate to me that we have the bullish analog tracking for the remainder of the year. Because there is a very high correlation to gold and silver, but uh, specifically gold, um, having strong, well, gold and silver, actually, having strong moves for the entire duration of the Venus elongation interval five. And for the non-astrofluent, that just means from right now until about January. Um, that interval started back in late August, uh, or maybe it was early September. I don't have the date right in front of me, but um, it's in a pretty extended period of time. So, um, so we did see that big move up in gold at, you know, last week or la at the last forum. And I actually made a YouTube video about it. There's been just some major technical indicators indicating that some tops could be forming in temporary, not, not long term, but um, temporary tops could be forming in gold. But when an instrument's at all time highs like that, it can just really blast right past everything. Um, and so gold really did outperform. Um, we did close up the week of 917 and um, saw some significant gains after that. Uh, silver also came, went up. 10%. Um, silver is now putting in a, a pretty intense weekly reversal candle with six divergences, um, suggesting that some weekly consolidation is underway in silver. But for the, the interesting piece for what everybody to mark on their calendar on gold and silver is that I think we are due for a primary cycle low um, November 4th. And you know, uh, I, I went to Gianni and Ray's retreat in Slovenia, and I learned a lot about their work, and I've been integrating some of that into my work, which has been really extraordinary. Um, and I've been using my work to hone in what I think to, to bring that um, low or high of a cycle um, to a really specific point in time. And so while that primary cycle low, I think, has a two-week orb, I really, I lean into that 11, the week of 11-4 um, for gold and silver. So keep a watch for that low, which in my opinion right now, um, based on uh, all of the information I have on gold and silver, that I believe that is a low for buying and um, that we could look for the next run up into December. Um, so some key October heliocentric astrology to keep your eye on. Um, next week, we have the Earth Chiron conjunction, which is happening at 21 degrees Aries. And that is such a hot point because um, that was where the solar eclipse was back in the spring of this year. Um, and it's, uh, so, so keep it, so let's bookmark that 21 degrees Aries is the earth Chiron conjunction next week on the 14th, immediately followed by that. We have the heliocentric Mars Jupiter conjunction, uh, which is going to be at 11 degrees Gemini, and that's on the 16th of October. So this is all kind of leading up then to our, um, almost lunar eclipse that is happening um, on the 17th. The, the Earth's shadow is just going to miss the sun, but it's happening inside the window of eclipse season because the nodal speed is still wobbling um, until the 18th. So th I see the, the next week as a, an extremely volatile period that we might see some big moves coming back into the financial markets. Um, and I'm, I'm looking, I have like, a, I have two scenarios, you know, I just, due to the, true to the Libra eclipse uh, season, I think we could potentially like make, uh, put on a blow off top. I think that's entirely possible. Um, I posted a, a, a monthly ABCD pattern on the S&P 500 on Twitter um, that completes at 6,108. Um, SPX has the same pattern that completes uh, around six, between 6,000 and 6,100. Um, so, you know, I, this is, there, there's a, there's a pretty strong, um, case in my mind's eye for, uh, some pretty significant, uh, consolidation either in, you know, coming up pretty quickly here or potentially I have some other really, um, really interesting and powerful um, astro for December. Um, December has uh, some planetary cycle returns 
that are actually almost unbelievable um, to Pearl Harbor, uh, to the 1987 stock market crash, and to the 2007 market top. And so whenever we get these, like a cluster of these planetary returns, um, we have to at least be on the lookout for um, a, a move down. You know, like, for example, when the Young Carry trade came off in August, that was, that aligned with the Jupiter return to the um to the biggest down day in 1929, 1028, 1929. And I mean, to the, to the exact degree. And it was also within the 19 year metonic cycle. So I think we just look for these events. I'm not a perma bear. I'm actually, I, I, I totally look for great buying opportunities in the stock market. But when we've run this hard um, and we have all of these technical indicators and time cycle indicators suggesting um, that we may, we may see a period of consolidation, um, that is what I've got on the lookout. Okay. Uh, thanks, guys. Thanks for everybody. Uh, thanks for your presentations. And um, we're going to open it up to questions right now uh, for about 10 or 15 minutes here. Uh, are there any questions out there in Twitter Spaces land? Let me see. Uh, it's always a little bit glitchy here sometimes. Let me see if this works. So... Uh, and um, if you do have a question, uh, let us know uh, also who that question might be directed to. All right, I'm not seeing anybody, uh, I'm not seeing anybody coming up uh, here for questions. Any questions out there about stocks or crypto or astrology or? Uh, macroeconomics or anything we've talked about today, uh, go ahead and sort of raise your hand and, uh, you know, um, and try to get you up here uh, for a question. Any of the panelists have any questions for anyone? Um, I have a comment and a question. Uh, Gianni, congrats on your book. That's awesome. You. Uh, definitely looking forward to that. Um, do you have any uh, other st stock picks you're willing to share outside of the crypto miners you mentioned and Reddit? Yes, I uh, I like Tesla quite a bit, um, and I'm also looking at some nuclear uh, power stocks. Um, I do have a position in Nano Nuclear Energy (NNE). Uh, that one uh, is looking pretty good. I think there's going to be some sort of uh, Kind of, I'm calling it like a like a trinity trade between you know crypto, AI, and nuclear. I mean, you know, we, we need to power this technological revolution to some extent, and so I've been trying to synthesize you know those those three trend trades, and you know, it's pretty pretty beautiful when you look at it from a geocosmic standpoint too. The the trine between uh, Uranus and Pluto that is coming up when they you know move into the air signs. Um, so yeah, I like some of the nuclear stocks, and like I said, one of them is uh, nanonuclear energy. I like Meta quite a bit too, and um, so th those are a couple. And you know, I got I got a long list, so I don't know how, how far you want me to go into it. Another one that I like uh, as well is Sweet Green SG. That's like a um, like a restaurant uh, type company that I've been watching uh, lately. So those are a couple that I'm I'm looking at. Cool, thanks. Any reason for Tesla? I mean, it's been. Um... I, I'm a long-term fan of Tesla and, and watch it all the time, too, uh, but this year has been frustrating. Uh, do you think it's about to get moving with this, um, you know, RoboTaxi announcement and earnings next week, or is it another one? Yeah, I, do you have I any think take so. On that? I think, well, I think it's a couple things. So, you, you know, you mentioned those two parts, which are definitely, I guess, headline catalysts. Um, it's also pressing, it's starting to press up against resistance. You know, if, if Tesla clears that 270 area, I honestly wouldn't be surprised if it if it went back to retest its all time high. I mean, we've seen this type of price action for Tesla from Tesla time and time again, where it experiences tremendous uh, runs up and then spends months or years going sideways. Now, the, the the stock has had a few stock splits in its history, but uh, if you can find a, a chart that lets you look at the you know the adjusted share price uh, nicely, you'll see that it's, it's exhibited this price action before. Not to mention interest rates coming down, that should help uh, it a little bit and perhaps, um, you know, I, I guess uh, supercharge some consumers to get to get some new cars. I mean, I mean, let's be real, the, the electric stuff that's not going away, I don't know if that's the immediate solution to all, all of the issues that, that we face. I mean, 
and who knows, may, maybe Elon's got some sort of, uh, um, you know, a hybrid car <laughs> in the pipeline. I don't know. I'm just thinking out loud here, but, um, I, I'm, I'm really watching that, that 270 level from a technical standpoint, if that clears, then, um, I think it'll be off to the races for Tesla. There are amazing cars to drive. And I was, I was in one, uh, a few weeks ago and the, I, I wasn't driving it, but I was a passenger and they're really amazing vehicles, honestly. Oh, totally. Yeah. Um, all right. Thanks a lot. Yeah. All right, guys. Um, I'm not seeing any any questions, or is any? Are you guys seeing any questions out there? I'm not seeing anything show up. Uh, I guess we explain. Which is explain unusual because usually we would we would have some questions. Uh, so um, yeah, I guess we'll we'll just wrap it up. We've been going for an hour. Um, unless anyone out there does have a questions for anybody here. Uh, you know, I have, I have been adding crypto again, uh, just only over the last, uh, two weeks. I've been, uh, cautiously, slowly scaling back into the market. Um, uh, and, uh, uh, yeah, but I, and, and I, I do, I do disagree with Mar uh, Marsilio. I do think the low is, I think the low is in, uh, but I, I do think, you know, it's, it's going to be a while before we see that big breakout, but I have, I have slowly started scaling back into Bitcoin, Ethereum, Solana and a few a few altcoins. So I just did want to say that. Um, all right, guys. Well, um, I'm not seeing any questions, so uh, I think we're going to wrap it up here. Um, and um, if anybody has any closing comments or last thoughts, oh, I'm good. Thanks for uh, thanks for hosting again, Robert, and thanks uh, Margo and uh, Marsilio for being here today. Yep, uh, just because anybody want to, um, I just wanted to make sure everybody knows that I've got a website that where you can book readings, and then you can also check out my YouTube channel, which has been a little slow the last month, but I'm looking forward to putting some more some more videos out. Um, Marcelio, or did you have any other? And Gianni, congratulations on your book. I'm so excited to read it. I'm actually going to order it right away, too. <laughs> Thank you. Margo, what is your website? Uh, it's margoamala.com. Um, All right. Yeah, follow Hi. me on YouTube and X. Sorry, uh, MarcelioMusing.com. Follow me on YouTube um, and X. Uh, content's been a little bit over, but uh, we're ramping up again with some new stuff soon. Thank you. Sorry, Robert, didn't mean to cut you off there. No problem, no problem. Uh, you guys can always find all my information at uh, www.astrocryptoreport.com dot com or patreon.com forward slash crypto domus one uh and i'm going to put that uh, patreon subscriptions out here on a, on a post right now uh gianni where can we find you well you can find me a lot of places if you're interested in the financial astrology uh work then uh, with mma cycles.com uh and ray merriman that's where i do most of the stuff there's the youtube channel um that we do uh on wednesdays and um we probably are going to launch the Merriman Market Timing Academy next fall again. Uh, I need to get with Ray to, to get the exact date, but uh, we're taking a little bit of a break. Got to update some of the material, and uh, we'll probably have another um, conference next year. We still don't know where, but, um, of course, we will keep you all posted on that. All right, guys. Uh, awesome to do this again, and we'll do another one next month uh, in November, and then... Uh, uh, we'll talk about uh, the elections and uh, Pluto going into Aquarius and some of those uh, big, some of those big planetary uh, events that are coming up in November. So uh, good luck, everybody, uh, and I hope you make the most of some of these uh, stock market opportunities that are presenting themselves today. And uh, we'll see you all again soon. Peace and over and out. <laughs>